Hi everyone, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. Continuing on from our previous video, we looked at basic channel relationships with linking, we looked at expression editing, as well as mathematical operations such as multiplication and division. Now let's look at how relationships work across multiple objects and I'll also introduce references and functions which will allow you to take the expressions beyond simple mathematics. For the first example, if I scrub the time bar, you can see that there is already an animation on the two geometry in the action composite. I would like the expressions geometry text to move vertically in the composite, but I would like the timing to match the horizontal movement of the two geometry. Looking at the schematic on the left of the dual screen split, you can see the nodes that are used for the composite. There are two geometry nodes for the 3D models and two axis nodes that control the animation for both geometries. For clarity's sake, I am going to rename the axis nodes so you will be able to see the relationships that will be established by the expression. The axis of the two geometry will be renamed as parent. The axis of the expression's geometry will be renamed as the child. Keep an eye on case sensitivity when you type, as upper and lower case letters are viewed as unique by the expression. Now the parent axis has the horizontal movement for the two geometry. If you look in the object menu and look at the X position, you can see that as I scrub the time bar, the value updates. Let's create the expression in the animation window. Holding down the shift shortcut on the keyboard, click once on the X position slider to select it. To the left of the interface, you can click on the animation button to bring up the animation toolset. The exposition channel we selected in the object menu is highlighted. The means in which you identify a channel when writing an expression is to look at the hierarchy of the channels in the channel editor. For example, at the top of the structure, the axis name is parent. Parent expands out to position. Finally, position expands out to the X, Y and Z channels. Each expandable triangle represents a level. When writing an expression, the triangle is symbolized with a dot, period or full stop, depending where you live. So the correct way to read the absolute path of the horizontal channel is parent dot position dot x. By knowing the absolute path of a channel means that you can link one channel to another across objects in the composite. We'll ensure that the X position channel is selected and to the right of the interface, I will press the copy button. Back in the schematic, you can select the child axis and it highlights the animation editor. Just scroll the list and you'll see the child entry and we can expand the triangles until it shows all the position channels for the node. Select the Y position channel in the list. To the right of the interface, I will press the link button and the expression is created. Looking at the bottom of the graph, Smoke has given you the absolute path of the parent's axis position. You can edit this if you choose, but if we scrub the time bar, you can see how the horizontal position of one axis is driving the vertical position for another axis. The second example I'm going to show you is a technique known as the controller axis workflow. This is where we take an axis with nothing attached and use it as a null or dummy object to apply animation to a bunch of linked channels. In the schematic, I have already added an axis and called it control. To make this clear, I will go to the object menu for the control axis and move the Y position to place the axis icon above the geometry in the composite. 
This step is not really necessary, but it will make the axis easier to see. Currently, if I scrub the time bar, you can see that there is no animation in the scene. I will go to frame 1, and to the right of the interface, I will turn Auto Key on to start creating animation. Hold down the Control Shortcut key on the keyboard and click on the Z Rotation slider. This keyframes the channel at the current frame with the default value of 0. Now using the time bar, scrub forward to 10 frames. Once again, in the Z Rotation, I will set a value of 720 degrees. You can now see that when I scrub between frame 1 and frame 10, the control axis icon is rotating in the scene. We would like the rotation to affect all the geometry in the scene, but we would like to also consider using different rotation channels to make the animation more dynamic. To the left of the interface, click the animation button to bring up the animation channels. We'll expand out the control entry, followed by its rotation entry. Selecting the Z rotation, we can fit the curve to the graph window by clicking the Frame All button located at the bottom of the animation window. Once again, we will click Copy to copy the curve into memory. Now we need to access all the rotation channels of the various nodes which are seen in the schematic view. To do this, swipe to the left edge of the screen so that the views switch around on the interface. This simply gives us an extended view of the animation channels. Now we can collapse the control entry for now. The nodes were labelled from Axis 1 to Axis 5 in the schematic, and that is visible in the animation channels. Starting off, we'll expand Axis 1, Rotation, and select the X rotation channel. Now hold down the Control shortcut key on the keyboard and don't let go until I tell you to. Next, Axis 2, Rotation, and select the Y rotation channel. We'll now expand Axis 3, Rotation, and select the Y rotation channel. Next up, Axis 4, Rotation, and select the X rotation channel. And finally, Axis 5, Rotation, and select the Y rotation channel. If you were still holding down the Control shortcut key, you would have performed a multi-channel selection. Pressing the Link button will create the expression. We now have five channels from multiple objects, all driven by one animation channel on the control axis node. Swiping again at the screen edge on the left switches the viewers back to the previous state. If I scrub the time bar again, you can see that the control axis animation is affecting all the geometries but on different rotation channels. Remember the flexibility here. You can change the values in the rotation of the control axis and each node will react accordingly. Now the animation is happening all at once, but I would like each geometry to start its animation one after the other. To do this, we are going to use two expression tools, Evaluate and Selection Order. A great view to help us achieve our objective is the Info view. To switch to the Info view, just go to the right of the animation graph and switch the mode from Channels to Info. Switch from the Hierarchy view to Flat view by clicking the small button with three lines at the top right of the Info view. This gives you a spreadsheet view of the channels and you can sort by the Expressions column to bring all the channels to the top of the list. It just makes it easier to use. Now the Selection Order function is based on the order in which you select the channels. So hold down the control shortcut on the keyboard and click on the axis entries in the correct order, starting with axis 1 and finishing at axis 5. You can see the selection order to the right of the entries, 
just to confirm your picking skills. You can now click the expression button to the left of the interface, or you could use the keyboard shortcut Shift Close Square Bracket. Go to the front of the expression and type eval open bracket. This means we're about to perform an evaluation function. The purpose of evaluation is to work out a value and take time into account when the value is generated. So evaluation always consists of two parts. The first part is already there for us. We are calculating the channel rotation based on the control axis. The second part is time. To break the parts up, we place a comma after the first part with no spaces. Press space and type frame. So far, each geometry will have the same value because they are all evaluating rotation at the same point in time. That is, frame 1. So we need to tell each channel to start the animation incrementally at a different frame in the composite. In other words, we would like axis 1 to start rotating at frame 1, axis 2 to start rotating at frame 2, and so on. This is where we use selection order. In the expressions editor, we carry on typing frame minus selection order. Closing the brackets follows this. Also ensure you capitalize the S and the O. When you press enter, you will see the expressions column and how each of the selected channels will increment in value where the selection order function was placed in the expression. If I scrub the time bar, each of the geometries will start rotating one frame after each other. Perhaps we would like a five frame delay between rotations. With all the channels still selected in the correct order, open the expressions editor with shift close square bracket keyboard shortcut. The editor shows you the expression for the first selected channel. A great tip is if you press the up and down arrows on the keyboard, it will shuffle through your last typed commands. Here you will find the original expression that was typed. To delay the expression by 5 frames, we need to multiply the frame offset by 5. Just edit the expression after the selection order function and type times 5. Pressing enter again will apply the expression to the channels. If we switch the info view back to the channels view and press the frame all button at the bottom of the channels window, you will see each curve and how they accurately offset from each other. Scrubbing the time bar illustrates that. Remember, adjusting the rotation in the control axis will affect the rotation of all the other geometries with the added time delay. The final example I'm going to show you is a combination of what we've learned so far plus a few random value generators. In other applications, you might call this wiggle. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see that we have some text bouncing around with its scale animated by an expression. To finish off this example, we are going to add an expression to the light in order to make it flicker in the composite. We will select the light in the schematic. Holding down the shift shortcut key on the keyboard, click once on the intensity slider for the light. We will switch to the animation menu and the intensity channel is selected. Press the shift close square bracket keyboard shortcut to bring up the expressions editor. To start the expression, we are going to evaluate a noise generator against time. Therefore, the expression opens with eval open bracket. We'll first use the rand function. This generates random values based on a number. So type rand open bracket frame close bracket. The reason for choosing frame as an option is that the frame number is constantly updating. This gives the random value. 
Now, because the expression is using evaluate, we type comma to go to the next part of the expression. For the time part, we'll just type frame close bracket. Reading the expression, it is saying generate a random value for every frame. Press enter and you can see the curve looks flat. But if you look closely at the intensity channel, you can see that there is a small value being generated. An important point. The random generators in Smoke calculate values between minus 1 and plus 1. So we need to multiply and increase those random values. Open the expression editor and just before the comma, type times 10. Press enter. The height of the curve grows, but it is still moving between positive and negative numbers. For a mild light flickering, we need to raise the curve into the positive values. Open the expressions editor and after the times 10, type plus 100. Press enter. The whole curve has shifted by a value of 100 into the positive values and things are looking much better. Two things remaining. The change to the curve is occurring at every frame. This is quite overwhelming for just a flickering light. To fix this, we will force time to update every five frames instead of every frame. Open the expression editor and just before the closing bracket, type in divided by five. Pressing enter to confirm the change, and you can now see that the value updates every five frames for a more pleasing result. Finally, looking at the curve, the values change in a constant fashion. If this is what you want, then great. However, if you want smooth flowing curves, we need to change the function we are using. Open the expressions editor, and instead of using the rand function, we will use the noise function. Pressing enter alters the curve again, and now we have a more naturally flowing curve. There is so much more you can still tweak and improve here, and you can even bake an expression into an editable keyframe curve, but I'll save that for another time. Expressions can be loads of fun and don't be afraid to try them. The worst that can happen is you get a syntax error and you try again. As I said in my previous video, you might be very surprised what you can achieve with expressions. If you've liked these expression videos and you would like more examples, please let me know. And if you'd like more information on Autodesk Smoke or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. I'm Gron K signing off for the Smoke Learning Channel. Mm -hmm.